sisters and brothers. Challenging reading that gospel. If your hand, your foot, your eye causes you to sin, cut it off. Sounds pretty dangerous for us, doesn't it? You know, in religion and in life, one of the real challenges for all human persons is our inclination to purity codes. That is our inclination that there is one way to do something. You know, it could be simple as there's one way to make the bed. There's one way to do the dishes. But when it comes to religion, it's very often there is one way to follow God in only one way. There is only one spirituality. There is only one way to worship. And there is only one right way to say Mass. And it happens always with purity codes to be what? My way. The danger of purity codes is it becomes about us. A divisive and exclusive way to live the life that God has called us to, which as we know is a call to unity to inclusion, to what we say here at St. Teresa, all are welcome. You know, I believe, because I am one, a native Eustonian, that there are lots of advantages in life in being a, a native Eustonian. The main one is, you know how to get home and get to your goal. Because if you have to navigate Houston traffic, on Friday I was coming home from the office, Shepherd, I live north of 11th Street, and Shepherd was backed up beyond the railroad tracks, beyond Memorial, beyond Dallas, beyond Gray, and all of those people were standing in line moving at a half a mile an hour. Click, 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 and I thought, they're not native Houstonians. <laughs> because a native Houstonian would have turned and gone down to Wall or Heights or Studemont and gone north, and they would have gone uh, towards T.C. Jester and around or down Memorial Drive. That there are lots of different ways to get home. That's what Jesus is telling us today. There are lots of ways to get home. El Dad and me, Dad. El Dad and me, Dad. Moses and Aaron are tired. The people have been angry with them. They've been exhaustingly leading them through the desert to the promised land, and they just run out of steam. And God says to them, you need some help. You need some help. You need 70 helpers. Let me gather up some elders, gather these elders, take them up to the mountaintop. I'll send my spirit upon them, share some of the spirit I shared with you. The good news with God's spirit is he never runs out. Right? There's always enough spirit. So he says, I'll send my spirit upon you. And by the way, that's good news for Astrid this morning. There's a lot of spirit of God. So he says to them, come up to the mountain. Now, we're never given the explanation, whether Eldad and Medad, whether they were lazy, whether they were late for dinner, um, whatever the reason might be. But they weren't there. They weren't at the mountaintop. They were down in the camp. And the Spirit of God came upon them just the same. And they were able to proclaim God's Word amongst the people and prophesy for them the will of God. It worked for them just like it did the people on the mountain down. And so we come to the example in today's gospel where these people are casting out demons in Jesus' name and John says, hey, he doesn't say, we shouldn't allow them to do this because they don't follow you, Jesus. He says, they're not one of us. They're not following our way. They're not one of us 12. And yet, they're able to do the mighty works of God, to cast out demons. Sisters and brothers, what a reminder for us that as we look at those in our society, those on the margins of our society, those who are politically different, those who are religiously different, those who practice Catholicism in a way that's slightly different than me. That every one of those persons can be filled with the Spirit of God. Because God's Spirit cannot be contained. 
It cannot be stifled by a purity code. It cannot be stifled by my way and not your way. Instead, what do we hear? We hear God's Spirit blows where it will. Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5.19, do not stifle the Spirit. It's another way of saying, don't choke off the Spirit. Brothers and sisters, our call is to be open to the Spirit of God wherever God's Spirit comes. Where do we see that? Where there are those who are healing, where there are those who are reconciling, where there are those who are uniting, where there are those who are binding up, where there are those who are seeing. And the call to us, sisters and brothers, is to recognize the temptation of a purity code. And we hear it in Jesus' admonition about hands and feet and eyes. Over the centuries, there have been lots of ways of interpreting those kinds of sins with our hands and our feet and eyes. At one point in time, those were all thought to be sexual. But if we listen to James today, and we listen to Jesus today, we can see another way that those, those divisive sins happen. For with our hands, we can push away. We can keep away. We can keep far off those who are in need, those who are marginalized, those who are different, those who come to us with nothing else. Or we can use our feet to simply walk away instead of accompanying as we're called as a parish in this season of our parish life to let no one walk alone. Or, sisters and brothers, we can sin with our eyes by turning away and not seeing. By choosing not to see the woundedness and brokenness and division and hurt in our community, in our world, in our society, in our families. But Jesus says to us, so powerfully, in a line that gets no explanation in Scripture commentaries, it's as easy as giving a cup of warmth. That the littlest thing can be the movement of the Spirit. And that we are indeed empowered to do mighty and the littlest works. And so today, in a few minutes, Astrid is to receive the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God that cannot be divided. She will receive the infinite Spirit of God and be empowered then in her life to do little works, cups of water to those in need, and to do mighty works. And sisters and brothers, as are we. So let us hear in this reading, not a call, Jesus is being hyperbolic. He's, he's being over the top. Let's not cut our hands off or cut our feet off or tear our eyes out. But let us hear today the call for Astrid and for each of us to learn how to embrace those who are in need and accompany them, to walk with and to see and to recognize our sisters and brothers as they heart hurt, as they are wounded, as they, like in James's letter, cry out to God for help. May we be there to accompany them. Astrid, may you join us. Please like, subscribe, or comment below.